Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. We'll call the September 6th meeting of the, North, of the Alamance County Board of Commissioners to order. John Paisley is uh, absent this morning, so in his absence, I'm in running the meeting. Um, we'll open with uh, invocation and pledge, and since John was on the table for that, I'll take care of that. So if y'all will join me, we'll open with a prayer. Father God, we just uh, lift up our brother and uh, to get him to a fullness of wellness and back to serving the citizens of Alamance County. I'll be with him and his family today. And Father, we ask you to be with us in the deliberations for the business of Alamance County to take care of our citizens in the uh, most just and uh, fair way. We ask you to watch over these deliberations, be with those who are speaking, keep us all on the schedule, dear Lord, and we ask you to be with the citizens, keep us all safe in Alamance County and in North Carolina and the country and in the world, dear Father. Bring us back to peace. And we ask all this, dear Lord, in Jesus' powerful and holy name. Amen. Stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, we are going to need to make a, a variation in the schedule since the sheriff is out for a doctor's appointment out of town. So item number two, one will be moved to the 16th of September meeting. Um, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Would we approve the agenda? Second. With... We have a second? Second, yes. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Um, public comments. Mr. James Walker. Yes. I'm Morning, back. Mr. Walker. Yeah, I'm back again. Uh, Mr. Paisley there was supposed to bring it before y'all to talk about finding the people that bring the trash down to the landfill with no tarps. And me and Sheriff Johnson spoke up and said, charge them $50, not $40. But my understanding from Mr. Carter that it was never done this past time, which was supposed to been done last two times. So we- That's not that. exactly right. We've asked our attorneys our county attorney, yeah. new county attorney, to take a look at it and make a recommendation. Yeah. So I really, I just thought I'd say, don't. You have any forget. comments you want to make on that? Yeah, absolutely. So the question that we got last time was to research whether or not there was a requirement for a local ordinance before the state could act in any way in creating a, a TARP law. And what we've researched and found is that there's no requirement for a local ordinance before the state would make any law on the subject. Um, we've also found that the state has robust uh, littering laws that are enforceable and that the county has taken a number of actions related to this complaint. Um, so that, that's where we are and, and I'm happy to brief the board in memo form on options moving forward. Well, we, we will, I believe we have a closed session coming up at the end of today's meeting and if that's the case then uh, are you prepared to discuss it at that point in time? Um, I'm not sure that it's appropriate discussion in, for closed session, at least not for today. Okay. Um, but I'm happy to do a, a brief for you all on options that may be available. Okay. So it, this will be brought up at the next meeting where y'all gonna pass it or where you're not gonna pass it. So I will know to go further on in the state higher, right? Well, I'm not certain what, what Mr. Stevens is saying yeah. is that there will be something to pass or not. So. Yeah. Correct. That It'll be a recommendation from him about what we should do. Yeah, passed here in Alamance County. 
Correct. This, this being out of Mance County. Right. Because just like I was out mowing the yard the other day, man come by and throw that liquor bottle at me. Okay. Come home from church, bags of trash laying in the middle of the road. I go out there with a broom, sweep it up. With beer cans, beer bottles, and all laying out there and everything else. And I'm out there sweeping it up in the middle of the road. And they, I mean, it ain't no sense in it. You charge them as they come through there without a tarp on when the trash is piled high as the truck bed, <coughs> and you find them word of mouth and run around. We go a whole lot of ways around our men's county. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Thank you. All right. I'll thank be you. back at the next. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Tammy Wall. Hi, Commissioners. It's good to see you good all again. Um, I just wanted to give you an update on our Carolina Across 100 initiative. Um, it is a partnership with the Regional Partnership Workforce Development Board as well as our Alamance County Chamber of Commerce, um, Alamance Community College, and our Alamance Burlington School Systems K-12 system. This initiative is directed at working with Opportunity Youth in Alamance County, those individuals 16 to 24 who are not in school and not working. Um, we have visited um, UNC Chapel Hill last week and met with some state delegates on the um, <coughs> intentions and plans of service delivery for these opportunity youth in Alamance County and Miss Anita Brown Graham came and visited our NC Works Career Center on Friday and um, she and Jim Bryan with Fairy Stone Fabrics um, she has asked to do a bus tour with some UNC um, professors and other <coughs> individuals who are part of the Carolina Across 100 initiative to have a um, bus come to um, Fairy Stone Fabrics um, on October the 19th. And um, there's school officials there that have not visited a manufacturing facility <coughs> before, and they are proud of the work that Jim has done um, in the community with our uh, youth apprenticeship and our efforts now to expand to adult apprenticeship. And so um, Ms. Graham, Graham has um, asked me to invite you guys to that event if you're able. And I will, when I get more information from her and Jim, I will be glad to share that with you. Thank you. I've known Jim and Fairy Stone Fabrics for 20 years. They're a great bunch of people. Good man. Randy Perkins. I would like to ask our guests from Guilford County to go before I do. This would be Harley Garrison. Okay. Mr. Garrison. Thank you. Commissioners, good morning. My name is Harley Garrison. I'm uh, president and CEO of Star Electric Company in Greensboro, and I'm here today as board chair of Guilford Works, Guilford County's uh, Workforce Development Board. Um, like Alamance, uh, Guilford's been involved in the realignment discussion for several years now. Um, those discussions have primarily been with the PTRC, wonderful organization filled with great people, who, many of whom I consider very good friends. Um, Guilford has uh, ultimately decided to remain a single county workforce board for a variety of reasons, um, but bottom line, we felt that that was the best thing for job seekers and businesses in Guilford County. Um, it came to my attention that um, Alamance's discussions have um, have been ongoing and you guys are really really close to making a decision about realignment and um, in a conversation with Randy Perkins last week um, we discussed the possibility of uh, having a conversation with Guilford County um, and the more we talked we just found some some synergies and some common interest our, our my employees are going back and forth at, from Gil uh, Alamance County to Guilford County as well as Randolph County. Um, so I'm not here representing my chief elected official or my board. This is based on a conversation I had with Randy Perkins last week. So knowing that I'm extremely late to the game <laughs> and there's a vote 
this morning. I didn't realize that until last week. Um, I wanted to bring before uh, the commissioners the concept of maybe creating a little bit of time and space to have a conversation with Guilford County. Um, both Randy and I in our discussions felt like there's some value there uh, and it may be worthwhile to the, the folks of, of Alamance County to create some space and time to have this conversation to see see if there is value there and, and um, having a conversation with Guilford County as you know we're, we're a single county um, our board is not uh, intentionally trying to grow or expand uh, this is just purely organic it's an opportunity and uh, we lo we'd love to have the opportunity to um, the space and time to have some conversations uh, if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen we had a great conversation I think my ask here though is just to have some, some space and time uh, to have this conversation to see if it makes sense for the for the good folks of Alamance County thank you thank you quick mr. Uh, vice chairman how much time are you asking for not really sure maybe a few weeks um, I think uh, time enough to have um, this the commissioners to have a discussion with the chief elected official in Greensboro and to have Guilford staff have a discussion with Alamance staff we really don't have a game plan or we're not even that far along so it's really just I think probably a, a few weeks be my, my guess thank you yes sir so have you initiated any conversations with Randolph County not yet <coughs> thank you thank you Okay, Mr. Perkins. Thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today, and I would really like to uh, encourage us the op and give us the opportunity to have a conversation with um, Guilford County. But in the event that that doesn't happen, I respectfully stand before you being opposed to your anticipated decision to realign with PTRC. However, if you do, I ask that you consider the following. Insist that PTRC provides and maintains an employment office located in Alamance County to administer WIOA funds to serve our citizens and help prepare them to be gainfully employed through job coaching, skills development, and job placement. Employers in Alamance County rely heavily on our NC Works office. Item two, continue to employ the experienced staff of the Regional Partnership Workforce Development Board who have been performing these jobs for over 30 years. <clears throat> they have made a sincere difference in our current workforce. And the, the board staff that I'm talking about, Tommy Wall, Tammy Wall was the director, you just heard her, two business services representatives, one operations manager, one accountability systems manager, and five WIOA staff that will be directly impacted as well. And number three, recognize the following systems who were appointed by this board of commissioners and have provided outstanding service on the Regional Partnership Workforce Development Board through their talent, knowledge, energy, and time over many years. And these citizens are Constant Wolf, Vice President of Alamance Community College, Kevin Sostat, Director of Economic Development Projects, when he's with the Alamance Chamber, Cheryl Ray, Alamance County Government, she's in Human Resources. Brittany Black, Vocational Rehabilitation, and Derek Bird representing Labor. Personally, it has been my honor and pleasure to serve as board chair with the professional staff and volunteers of the Regional Partnership Workforce Development Board. And they should be recognized for their dedicated, outstanding service. And with that said, I would really encourage you to consider what uh, Harley Garrison had just proposed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Perkins. Okay, that's all those that have signed up for public comments. Does anybody else have a comment they want to make on this side? 
Anybody on this side? Okay, that'll be the end of public comments. Uh, do we have a motion on the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Let's pass unanimously. And um, Brian Baker. Mr. Ricardo, I'd like to recognize uh, David Putnam. Thank you for the presentation. Okay. We need to we need to approve them. They were part of the okay. consent agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. It's on the second page. I'm sorry. Don't let me help you. That's, that's part of consent agenda. I see. Okay. I'm not going to be a lawyer. Good morning, County Commissioners. Good morning, David. Uh, this is my first time presenting to you all, so I feel very grateful for that. My name is David Putnam. I work over the Alamance Chamber as a Senior Director for Economic Development. I'm here today to request for you all to set a public hearing for economic incentive consideration at the next September 19th uh, public meeting of the County Commissioners. Um, what we know about the company is the it's codenamed Project Wavelength. The company's name is Steratech, um, and we'll be sure to share that with folks. Can you repeat that name? Steratech. How, how do you spell that? It's S-T-E-R-I um, hyphen T-E-K. If I'm well, not mistaken. Well, I ask. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, the company focuses on sterilization of medical devices, and the company would be locating, um, if the decision is made to locate in Alamance County, they would be locating in Burlington, North Carolina. So. Where are they located now, as far as other companies? So they're right. California based, um, and uh, this would be kind of their East Coast foothold in the south okay um, <coughs> we need a vote on that just a vote to set a public hearing for September 19th so okay. moving we have a second, second. No more. any discussion hearing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. thank you thank you all very much thank you, thank you are you from California I'm not from California, I'm from Raleigh. <laughs> Close enough. Close I enough. It didn't quite sound as I think this is your second or <laughs> I think this is David's second or third meeting joining us, isn't it, David? Yeah. 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 Good to have you with us, buddy. Well thank you all very much. Um Okay. Mr. McCum Mr. Morkum. Morning. Good morning. How you doing? Hi. Oh my God! That. This is this is a <laughs> narwhal. Uh, oh <laughs> Should be something in here. Ah, here it is. Folded. Good morning. Good morning. And um, thank you very much for the opportunity. My name is Peter Morcom. I'm speaking on behalf of Free Financial Reform for Excellence in Education. Free is a charter school organization that's created six charter schools, two of them here in Alamance County, and we want to create another one um, by partnering with local government. Uh, that's the town councils, the ABSS, and of course the commissioners. Um, and I just want to make the case for what we can do for Alamance County, for the community as a whole. And there's two things. One is we can help to reduce taxes. And um, the other is to expand choices available for parents and students. Um, so, since this meeting has an unusually heavy agenda, Chairman Paisley asked me to keep it short. <laughs> uh, so I'll not take up your time by speaking length. Instead, I'm going to take a leaf from Craig Turner's book and um, bring a gift. And here it is. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> well, it's easier said than done. <laughs> 
Thanks, um, Pete. Thank you. Anyway, what, what I wanted to say is actually in the bag. Uh, one for, for the chairman. Sure. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, um, what has changed since November? I last spoke to you in November, and we were going to build a school. Now, we didn't raise the money. No, I did warn you we might fail. Um, so, instead, we're going to set the school up in a rented building that we either purchase outright or, well, I say rented. We could rent the building or we could purchase it. We have a little bit more time to raise the money. Uh, we'll need $2 million. We aren't, we aren't there yet. Um, so, that's an update on our plans. The other thing is, how can you help? And uh, so we've got a high stakes interview next Monday in Raleigh. This is do or die. And um, above all else, the thing that most helps us to have a good chance is political support. And um, you provided a support letter uh, back in November, I think it was, or maybe December. I'm hoping you'll find it in your hearts to do the same again, and perhaps an even better one. Um, and oh, that one was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> the, the only thing better than political support is steadfast political support. So I'm appealing you, and I'm hoping for the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Mr. Morecambe, I just want to make a couple of comments, if you don't mind. Um, I believe the last time you were here was in April. Oh, when we spoke about this before, I believe that's the case. Uh, uh, but I, I'm impressed with your progress. You've already got a building under contract. Is that correct? I'm I'm not allowed to say. Okay, uh, my, no my my completely facilities understand. person says I'm a blabbermouth. I've got to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I completely understand. But what I'm my just, wife says about me. I'm, I'm impressed that you keep your you you're, you're forging ahead. And you're looking forward. It's and, very and very. To, we've actually got three buildings, but. I, don't tell don't sure. tell my facilities person. Oh, I, said I understand. That. <laughs> but I just wanted to uh, wish you luck on your meeting on the twelfth. And I just wanted to say a couple of things. Uh, I know the last time you were here, there was a, and I just wanted to, to speak to Miss Thompson. Um, I just wanted to let you know. I know you're in opposition of this, his charter school. No, I'm not in opposition to anything. I okay. just didn't want it, public school children to. So like they were kind of getting school. beat up on. That's well, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad. for any school that a kid can prosper and be safe and grow in. Excellent. If it's on the moon, I don't care. Well, so. I had a feeling that you and I would. I, I had a couple of things I wrote down last night that I think you and I agree on. We agree on giving our children the best possible mm -hmm. education. Yeah. We agree on, you know, giving parents more choices in this environment, and I think we agree on the importance of the the taxpayers having a, a cost-effective way to to pay for education. And I just want to, you know, just say that, you know, I think we agree on a bunch of stuff. And I like what you're doing. I, I like your fortune ahead. Uh, Thank you, sir. Whether you have the $2 million or not, it, it, it's close. We'll and, find and I, a way. And I do believe your balance sheet is going to look a lot better on December 31st as it does before it does today. Yeah. Don't ever give up no. on anything. No. Because if it's meant to be, it's supposed to be, especially when it's about a kid or someone who's got a real disadvantaged life. That's what we're supposed to do is take care of each other, no matter what it takes. Well, if they turn us down on Monday, we're not giving up. Don't. That just makes you work harder. Well, I know, Mr. Morgan, every time you open up a uh, charter school, demand is through the roof. There's more mm -hmm. people wanting to come that, than we can imagine. And, and I, you know, when I look at situations like that, what things that pops in my head is I just truly wish that the state of North Carolina would let the public funds is going to follow the child. Yeah. Let them follow the child and let the parents make the decisions of where they'd like to send their children to school and not be based on an address. Yeah. I, that's my that's my personal hope and, and I hope it comes to fruition at some point in time. But thank you for your time. Thank you for your kind comments. Yes, sir. Mr. Carmer, Commissioner Carter, I'd like to move that we uh, draft a letter of support for uh, charter school efforts for elementary I County. second that. Any discussion? What is that? What is that blue thing with a horn sticking out of his head? Oh, <laughs> one of our teachers. Uh, well, we we have teachers on our board, or we, at least we had. Um, thought we ought to have a slightly ridiculous mascot. So <laughs> this, it's called a narwhal. It's a narwhal. Yeah, we are the narwhals. That's right. 
Lord like must it. have been in a great mood when he made Absolutely. that one. <laughs> I, I, I think people would remember that. Oh, sure. Yes. <laughs> sure. Um, the water. Okay. The water. Let, let it come. Let it come. Any further discussion? Yeah. Right. Good. Thank you. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 So unanimous. Thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Chen. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Bobby Chin with Alcovets, uh, <clears throat> and I have uh, Bob Councilman with me as well. This weekend is the Burlington Alamance County Balloon Festival at Cedar Rock Park. Uh, rain or shine, we're having a balloon festival. And I appreciate this opportunity for the commission commissioners to let me speak. First off, I want to thank the county and county parks and recs for the close cooperation and working together to get the park ready for the f festival this weekend. Just uh, again, we're raising the funds raised that this festival will go to build the Chestnut Ridge campus up on Bass Mountain. Uh, We've got the permits from the county for our water and septic system, so the pro what we have to do now is wait for the driller to put us on his schedule because he's got so much work to do. But in regards to the uh, park, in preparation, uh, the things we've done there just recently, we've installed a new 200 amp main service with multiple 50 amp, 30 amp, 20 amp connections on the, f on the farm property. We've also installed a new 50 amp <clears throat> connection at the barn for the entertainment stage because the park recommended says the best place for entertainment is right there next to the barn. And so what we're doing by putting this service there, the park, whenever they want to have an event, they've got the electrical service to support it. We're also installing a 20 amp and a 50 amp service over by the restroom there when you come into the park in that parking lot. We cleared the tree branches and the undergrowth around Garrett House Trail, both inside the park and outside the park on the right side leading up to all the adjacent property uh, that belongs to the park. <clears throat> We've installed two 14-foot new gates rather on that property that's on Garrett House Trail, so it makes it easier for the county if they have something out on that piece of land to get to it. We purchased 30 tons of uh, crushed stone for driveways in the fields that were identified by the park as where we would need it. And when we're done, if we need to move it, we'll move it. And, we've <clears throat> and we Alcovets have purchased all this material and have donated our labor for free. Wow. But those are the things, you know, our philosophy is when we have an event that we leave it better than when we got there. So we feel that all the changes that have been made will benefit the county, the citizens of Alamance County, and you know this makes us a better place. And the, the Alamance County Park folks can do more things out there. At, uh, so. Commendable. Mm -hmm. Sounds commendable. <clears throat> um, Great work. Thank you. Is. Thank you so much. Any questions? Thank you for, so much for this opportunity. Come out. Looking forward to it. Uh, we've got 21 balloons. We've got a car show, a bike show, a 5K race, and important, Sunday is 9-11. We will have a 9-11 remembrance ceremony right. at 8.30 uh, there. <clears throat> now, our chairman, who's absent this morning, has a balloon and I pl think plans to participate, yes. and he yes. would definitely have wanted that to have been known at this meeting, so uh, I think it clear that he plans to be there. And um, we got live entertainment every night. Oh, good, okay. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think. Now, uh, one quick question. Yes, sir. The last time I went up there, which was a while back, I think it was when you uh, had the first visitation, I couldn't have gotten up there without my truck, I don't believe. It was gonna be easier for people to get up there this time? It's my understanding that the road, <coughs> Fire Tower Road, is going to be improved because of the two emergency towers up there. Okay. However, we hope that the state does not pave it. Right. We'd rather have it be the big boulders taken out of the road, but we would rather have they put something down where to keep the, the rocks in place. But we don't want to make it a paved road because it's just too inviting for folks to go up there and 
And fourthly, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it's isolated up there. Now, where's the 5K run going to be? The 5K run is going to use what is the existing route that the schools use for their 5K races. Okay. Okay. And the Marine Corps League is sponsoring that. <coughs> Any other questions? Well, personally, I'm just happy to have the balloon rally back uh, in Alamance County. It's been a long time. I remember <coughs> in high school growing up, you always look forward to the balloon rally. You could see it for miles and miles around. It kind of brings Alamance County to, to folks' attention driving along the highway and just uh, maybe <coughs> yeah, encourages people to come take a look at Alamance County. This is going to be a great a great time. And Thank you. We intend to make this an annual event and we'll work with the park and you as county commissioners to establish a date every year that, that we'll have this event because I think it again it creates a sense of community and it does. it'll make a make Alamance County a destination that weekend. In fact I got a call from a fellow in Georgia who was going to come up for three days for this. I got to ask where in Georgia, if you know. From Atlanta. Oh, oh okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, how he heard Atlanta about it in know. Atlanta. <laughs> I said, how did you learn about it? He just said, hey, he had heard about it. So. Yeah. Well, any other comments? Good. Well, thank um, you very much. Thank I worked you. with uh, Iredell County when they had a regular annual balloon rally over there, and that was a big event for that county. Yes. Um, well, you know, this is a county event in regards to EM Hope Fire Department is involved, the uh, Emergency Management Service, the Sheriff's Department, again, and of course, the park. Uh, we want to make this, you know, it's an inaugural event, and for this first time, it feels like we're building a a railroad and the train locomotive is on the railroad as we're building it but I think it's exciting uh, we look forward to folks coming uh, I think you know people should say hey next September you know every year and to however long well, I know we're all looking forward to it thank yes. you thank you very much for the people uh, at home where do they go to get tickets they go online to alcovets.org and the incentive is purchase your ticket ahead because if you prepay for your parking ticket you'll park closer to the event if you wait to the day of the event you're going to be parked at the furthest lot at the park you're almost sold out aren't you uh everybody's watching the weather but and on the day of the event the price of the car pass goes up to thirty dollars now understand, your car pass is for everybody in the car. There's not a second admission fee. Does that include the bed of your truck? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> if the police allows you to load your truck in, but it's the car pass that allows everybody else to just come on in. Okay. Yeah. Website again, one more time. Alcovets.org. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Looking you. forward to it. Okay, Ms. York, you're up. Good morning, Commissioners. Is it okay if I sit here? Sure. Would you prefer I come up to the podium? That's fine. I'm just leading this discussion for you all. You heard from the state uh, workforce development team back at your meeting August 15th, and the board deferred a decision at that time to either remain with their current uh, regional partnership workforce development board or to become part of the Piedmont Triad Regional Council. So we're back before you um, with the question of what the board desires to do, whether to realign as it is being suggested by the state. Their intention is to reduce the number of workforce boards across the state and to consolidate those. So that is why um, we had asked you to look at joining the COG for this service or whether or not the board wanted to remain with the current provider. If the board does desire to make a change and to realign, we would be uh, sending a letter of intent to the NC Works Commission. It's um, a long process. They would be making the final decision on behalf of all the counties submitting such a letter, and then the decision would become effective July 1 of 2023. So you're essentially locked in for your current fiscal year. This would be a change right. starting in July of next year. And I Any will add questions? that in the meetings uh, to address 
Mr. Perkins issues uh, in the meetings that we had with uh, PTRC, uh, we were assured that the location would remain open, Correct. staffing would remain constant. Um, I don't remember asking a specific question about board, assi board appointments. Do you recall if we, if we addressed that or not? I know we have board appointments to their We would board. have a board appointment. It depends on how many um, right. members join and what direction the state would be sending them. And we have some representat representatives from PTRC I see here this morning. I, um, I think both are here uh, if there are specific questions so that uh, we can do, help facilitate a decision. Do we know how many board appointments we will have? I don't know at this time. Well, uh, Please speak from here. So, uh, Matthew Dolls, Executive Director of PTRC. Um, we are in the process because of the state uh, pushing for changes. Um, Davidson County last week um, voted to ask the state to move into our workforce area. Obviously, we're having this discussion with you. Randolph County is also a county that is having discussions. We can't give you a, a firm number until we kind of know, but basically, you know, we break it down by population and then you get a number of seats based on the population to that okay. county. So I will tell you that our kind of target for board size would be 30 to 35 folks. We currently have 23 with our current configuration. And so we'd be adding seats, but also based on population, some of our members may give up seats to make sure that we have a good mix of folks on the board. Okay. What counties are currently in the COG? So currently we have uh, Davie, uh, I'm make sure that I'm right. So uh, this is Wayne Walker Fox, who is our workforce director. Cog, Cog is two different. The Cog and workforce development are two different boards. Right. right. So they're two different. We're certainly members of the Cog, and so we're already, you know, delivering aging services here, right. housing, planning, and things like that. So we've been great partners. We've been a member for 50 years of our organization, so we always appreciate mm -hmm. that strong membership. In our workforce area, which is not all of our counties because it's been split through the past, we have Davie, Edmond, Surrey. Stokes, Rockingham, Caswell, and Forsyth, and now Davidson has asked to join that as well. We're talking to you and talking to Randolph. Um, Montgomery County is also in our 12 county region for other services. Um, they're <coughs> leaving their current configuration also, which is with you folks, um, but they're going to join Mid Carolina, which is out of Fayetteville, because they would like to be tied to Moore County and Fayetteville based because of the military base and some other things going on in that area. So there's a lot of flux around this right now, but that's kind of the, the parameters that we have that we're working through. I sit on our aging committee. Thank you for Bob. Oh, He's awesome. <laughs> He's, oh, yeah. He knows his stuff. I appreciate that. That's good dude. Any comments, Bill? No. Questions? Okay. Well, I, I guess I have a comment. Um, I was not anticipating another option this morning. Um, <laughs> frankly, you know, my concern at the last meeting was that Alamance County might get lost in a bigger group. Um, I understand that the administrative costs are higher as you have smaller groups of counties, um, and so that was a reason to, to join a bigger group. But you know, Alamance County and Surrey County are very different. Um, I think it makes sense just I know we've already delayed and we don't like to keep delaying things but I think it makes sense to wait two weeks and just have a conversation and make sure that um, there were haven't that we haven't looked at all of our options that's my only comment I truly believe that uh, time is on our side considering this doesn't have to <coughs> doesn't go into effect in July 2023 20, right. so um, I concur with what you said I think we have time to uh, talk it's only the first week of September. Even if we, uh, even if it drug out for another 30 days, I still think we'd be fine. I mean, October. Uh, well, I'm just saying we have a month. We have we have time to talk to to the powers that be, so to speak. So, so y'all want to make a motion to that effect, Mr. York? Is there any downside? And no, a little bit. no. I, I, my understanding is that the deadline of September 15th was not firm for a decision they were just encouraging the board to make their decision by then so we could certainly bring this back at your next meeting if that's the desire of the board to explore conversations with Guilford that's, fine. If that's what you'd like to do that's fine. Um, okay 
Well, we have had a, do we have a motion to that effect? Do we need a motion to that effect? Either way, sorry. I don't think we need a motion. Okay. The gentleman from Guilford. He's over did here. You, did you just found out about this? He did. Mm -hmm. um, I knew there was realignment going on um, for quite some time. Um, I found about I found out about uh, this particular meeting on Thursday of last week. Okay. So I'd never met Randy before. I just called Randy. Hey, what do you think? Mm -hmm. We have I mean, it just makes a lot of sense, but we've never talked about it. That's kind of yeah, Mr. Perkins called me and I encouraged him if they wanted to make a comment about it to be here to make a comment about it this morning. So we don't have any more time. So okay, well we'll defer that to the 16th then. Yeah, I think it's the 19th. Uh, Strakens. Good morning. Good morning. So I am joined this morning by Mr. Miles and his son. Uh, and this is an appeal of a discovery. Uh, this discovery just means we had something that was not taxed that needed to be taxed. We've created a tax bill. And um, we've met and discussed that a little bit and they'd like to bring their uh, concern before you. Now this board has the power to waive any or all of the bill. It is completely legal for the board to do. Um, it is just a decision of what's most prudent, what does the board choose to do. And I'll step to the side and let them uh, present. And if you have any questions, I'm right here. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners. Um, first time before you all, but um, glad to be here. My name is Reverend uh, Logan Miles, D. Miles, representing my father, just to, it's Logan E. Miles. Um, and so what's going on with the uh, recovery? Um, got a lot of documents, got a lot of stuff going on, but uh, you all received some of the information like the maps and whatnot. Um, I just made a few notes that I wanted to cover. Um, give me one second, please. Um, so we come to this, this, this position here right now is because, um, um, had been searching for some information for my dad. Uh, he had requested that I would, uh, look for some property for him. Um, and I went on the internet, uh, back in February of this year, I think it was around 24th, something like that. But anyway, uh, what happened was that as I, I got to looking at the information and um, what I found out was that um, after I looked at the overview of the land and the property, uh, I, I went in looking for some uh, information about his property, where he stays at on uh, Corbett Road, which is 3472 Corbett Road. That's mm -hmm. where I initially went in at looking for information. Uh, where there's a, f um, on his property, a little over four acres. And then uh, I proceeded to look at some air property that his mom left the brothers and the sisters, was a little over 20 acres there in the same area at his house. And uh, once we uh, went through all the information on uh, on that side of uh, the road, uh, I said, well, let's look at uh, what's on Neighbors Road. And he said, well, I ain't never checked on Neighbors Road. I said, well, let me go in here and look on Neighbors Road and see what we got going on over there because he had actually two properties, as you all can see the map, uh, if you hit that map uh, on Neighbors Road. Um, it was uh, approximately uh, four acres, 4.2 acres or something like that initially. Then my dad uh, gave uh, my son, my brother, uh, acre there, uh, which was uh, parcel one six nine eight eight three, and once uh, he did that, um, that land was uh, actually purchased and deeded to him uh, October the fourth, nineteen seventy three, uh, book three ninety eight. 
page 433 and 434. Um, so once we find that information out, I decided I would come over and talk to the tax department. And um, I didn't get to come with him the first time and he had talked to uh, Penny Chandler and she told him to go get some information Someone he had a deed and all that, which I got all this information if y'all need to see that. But I, he, it was deeded actually, like I said, in uh, October the 4th, 1973. So there, he told me that uh, when he got back that day and I talked to him later on that evening, he said, well, I need you to help me out. I said, what's going on? I said, well, I'll go with you. So we went back to the surveyors, the whales that surveyed it uh, at that particular year. And uh, they helped us find some information. They actually got all the maps, everything lined up, everything was right. And that particular same day that we came back and we went to talk to Miss Chandler and she was very unprofessional. She uh, talked to us like we was nothing. Uh, she said she didn't have time to talk to us and we could take out information and, and leave. At that time, uh, I told my dad, I said, we're not going to... Uh, put it with that she got loud and I told him said I'm just trying to get my information I'm just trying to give you information that you don't have and she said well I can't you know I can't really fix it I'm not authorized to fix it blah 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 I said well if you're not authorized I understand you can't help me so at that time I, uh, I uh, contacted Miss um, Kelly McDonald a very professional lady uh, talked to her and uh, she, uh, I told her what had found and what was going on with it. And when I uh, um, continued to uh, proceed with uh, the information that I had told her about, um, as you can see on the map, uh, where uh, partial 169882, uh, this land was connected. This. This now new number, 178269, was all connected to 169882. And it was it was a property that uh, Mr. Mr. Gray's had, um, which was approximately 29 acres and something, and this land was added to it. Um, but uh, as we talked uh, in, with uh, Mr. Atkins, uh, we talked it out and we talked and we kept uh, doing information and trying information he found out more information and he went back and checked uh mr uh gray's property to see that had been paying had he paid the taxes or overpaid taxes and stuff like that and every time he went back it was always the 29 acres that was paid he never paid for the property that uh at hand we're talking about right now uh so once um we got to that point um uh, Miss O'Donnell told me that she would send out some information and once she could get it back in the system and get it back in the map. Um, so my understanding was that this happened somewhere around uh, 2000, a little uh, 2000. This is 2022. So this spot of land has been sitting there with that other tax mac number attached to it. And when I discovered it, I'm like, Dad, we got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, once we 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 continued to, to the process and Miss um, uh, O'Donnell she uh, stayed in contact with me told me what she was doing and uh, I said okay and then she said well the law says we can only go back five years and collect taxes um, and I said well she said with no interest and stuff like that and I said, okay, uh, which I have all the tax bills and everything that he paid. My dad had no idea that this property was not there. He had no idea because he had more property. As you look at the map, uh, you look at the map, it says that Edward Miles Lane, he has another eight acres of land on that side of the road, the neighbor's road. So he was thinking that he had all this stuff was, he was paying all the tax of everything that was on the neighbor's road. Um, so... At this point now, we are asking that you all would uh, suspend that payment. Uh, I think it's on the back of the page uh, for those years that are out there. Um, and 
reason being is because, like I said, he had no idea that was out there. He didn't make this mistake, and he felt like it's, it's wrong for him to have to pay for somebody else's mistake. And I agree with him uh, at this point. And uh, I think I got one other thing that uh, I want to share before I sit. And I appreciate you all's time, but I just want to share this 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 document here. It's under um, GS 105-312. It's presumptions. And it says when property is discovered and listed as a taxpayer in any year, it shall be presumed that it should not have listed by the same taxpayer proceeding five years unless the taxpayer shall produce satisfactory evidence that the property was not in, in existence. So like I said, we had no idea. And that's my case is that I discovered it. And I'm glad that I discovered it. If I wouldn't have discovered it, it would have went on five or ten more years, and it still would have been the same case. And I don't think Riley would be would really be all that uh, happy about losing twenty some years of taxes on property. So that's why I stand where I am, and I appreciate y'all listening to me. Appreciate you coming up this morning. Yes, sir. Mr. Akins. So the the question is. Um, whether or not to release the discovery. And on the page uh, that I've included with the amounts, just to be clear, uh, we have the discovery amounts due at the top. They total to 1185 and 17 cents. And then we have the current amounts. And the reason I included the current is so that you can see uh, more of the tax burden that we're talking about. And so the, the um, bill that they're looking at paying, while it includes the discovery, also includes current year taxes. And so uh, this is a, a $2,000 tax bill from them, uh, but only the 118517 is what we're talking about as far as the potential to waive. The current year is, is not um, waivable. It's not part of the discovery. Right. But this back amount, I just thought it was pertinent to, to put in context that there are other bills to be paid, that, that there, there's uh, more burden to be borne than just this discovery amount. Um, was a bill being sent to somebody? There was no bill. No. no. No bill at all. No bill at all. And I might add to my dad, he, he's a fixed income, he's 87 years old, and for him to find out this, the way I, we found it out, uh, I, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm really uh, grateful that I had a chance to go in and do it because I would have never did it if he wouldn't have asked me to pursue it. So if, the, if there's any, uh, just to clarify, um, the mapping piece of this drew the parcel boundary around this property so that on the map it appeared to be the neighbors but behind the scenes on the the assessment and billing side we just didn't have an assessment we just didn't have a bill and so for probably about 20 years we're not certain because of records retention it's, it's kind of sunsetted off into the distance so we don't know exactly when but we think it was all the way back to when the old physical maps were digitized we think that the error occurred at that time. So for about 20 years, the map says everything's there, but it just has this property in the neighbor's name, but in the billing record and the assessment record, it just doesn't exist, no bills at all, which is what uh, caused us to have to generate the bills. Because the first question I had is, well, my goodness, has this person been paying taxes they shouldn't have paid? Nope, no, none were paid. But then after that, the law requires me to go and capture the five years. We, we don't capture the 20, we capture the five. Um, the law does charge the tax assessor with responsibility, because this is real property, uh, to know that that's there. And so there's uh, not a, um, any interest or fee that goes with that, because that's our error. The, the state knows when they write the law that when these errors happen, they are our errors. Uh, and, they, and they definitely were. It was on the, the account of the tax department. I can confirm um, everything that you've been told. Those, those seem to be exactly uh, what has occurred. So this brand new found discovered land in North Carolina, <laughs> yes, like Columbus, uh, is it yours now? Now? N now it is. Uh, my day is still in his days. Uh, he's, it's actually the reason why we were doing because. Like I said, he's 87 years old and he was going to just pass it on over to me. But 
Because uh, like, he loves you. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually, actually, when, when I went in, I was really, it really just knocked me off my feet to find out that it could be, the system could be that bad and not tell them how many other properties is like that from this transition from uh, drawing maps to uh, digital maps. So now they get a tax bill for the land that they have and it's real and exists. Right. Yes, we already got one for this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's on I the sheet. <laughs> well, and, and I put myself in in their situation. You know, when, when you realize that there's been a mistake on the uh, side of the tax department, and then you call attention to it, and you get shut down, and then you continue to call attention to it, and when it gets fixed, it's oh, well, congratulations, here's a bill. Yeah. Maybe I need to shake an honest man's hand. Thank you. I well, appreciate I, I, it. Yeah, I, my concern is about being shut down in the first place. That uh, bothers me a little bit, too. So mm -hmm. I hope we address that. But, I have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, so that being said, the, the power to work with the, the bills, there's nothing that, that I have. This is a decision for the board to make, not for the assessor to make. So we just need to say it's okay for you to do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Give me direction and I'll do it. <laughs> Any other questions? Come I would on. like to say so. I don't mind paying my bills, but I don't like to pay somebody else's mistake. <laughs> but because if you you pay somebody else's mistake, you might as well pay the bills for them. <laughs> and I, he can ask your tax guy out. I've been paying my tax every year, and I don't miss the time paying my tax. But I really think if a person make a mistake, he ought to be cleared to put a mistake. Well, when I was working on a job, if you can do your job right, you get fired. So that's what needs to be done to them. If they can't do the job, you need to get somebody else to do the job. Buddy. Amen. That's the way I feel now. That's the way I've been doing for 87 years. That's the way my dad taught me how to do things. Raise right. Right is right. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to... Um, you said it's eleven hundred dollars and eighty five. Eleven eighty five seventeen. Yeah, let's let's move to uh, take care of this. I second. Do we owe him anything? <laughs> <laughs> Discovery fees. Right? Do we owe you yeah, anything? Yeah, Discovery fee. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 So you're unanimous. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Miles. Thank you, Jeremy, for working on this. Thank y'all. If you find any more land, you just let us know. Okay. Take care. Oh man. Okay, Ms. York. Okay. Good morning again, commissioners. Good morning. Um, you have been asking for staff to bring back the discussion of the American Rescue Plan funding. So I am just the messenger here. This is a team effort. Uh, we've been working on this for a little while and just wanted to get it back in front of you to let you know where we were, what lies ahead, and what direction we're thinking. So not necessarily a, a decision to make today, but just to um, keep this moving forward and keep it on your radar screens. So some background information, which I'm sure you're aware. Um, the county was awarded $32.9 million in the American Rescue Plan funds. Your first half of that came in 2021. Your second half came in June of 2022. Uh, so far to date, you have $2.8 million that has been set aside for your ARP eligible projects. So this is some personnel, some equipment. This includes your human services complex uh, HVAC, which was about 1.7 million. Also includes a water and sewer line extension of 500,000 at the um, public safety training center. Your next bullet is what you set aside for your great grant funding. So that's 381,000. That's a possible match for great grants. Um, then we had 3.5 million, which was a supp um, the supplant money for 2021. And this also includes um, a 300,000 appropriation for EMS in 22-23. And then the next bullet is the estimated supplant for 21-22, also 3 million there. 
And then you um, elected to do the standard allocation for your revenue replacement funds of 10 million that you were eligible to submit for. So you have approximately 13.2 um, remaining that would be subject to the ARP funds. And we'll talk about the other funds that would be um, left over from revenue replacement as well. And the supplant, I'm sorry, from the supplant, not the revenue replacement. This is a little further detail of what we just went over. So this is detailing a little bit more of the supplant funds for 2021. You had um, 207,872 that went towards the health department for the public health uh, COVID response. You also had payroll costs associated with EMS and the health department. And this is from March of 21 to May of 21 for about 3.538 million. On the fiscal year 21-22 ARP funds, these are the ones that have been proved, approved, set aside, or obligated for new activities. I mentioned the 500,000 for the water and sewer extension. Uh, the next is a communicable disease nurse position. You obligated 213723 uh, for this position. The HVAC uh, upgrade at the Human Services Center is the 1.7 that I mentioned on the previous slide that has also been obligated. And then we have a grant administrator position um, which obligated $236,000. $250 um, for that position. And that is actually a, another item on your agenda to talk a little right. bit further about that position and the work that they're doing. Uh, the next bullet, you had um, obligated 130000 It was initially intended for ultraviolet sanitizers for the ambulances, and they are now requesting to do air purifiers at the EMS base instead of um, the ultraviolet sanitizer so we wanted to make that note same amount of money same intended use just a different um, function there and then your second to last bullet uh, just under 50,000 has been obligated for health software at the detention center and then there's the great grant set aside um, that we've also obligated here is a pie chart which reflects um, the verbiage that I have shared with you on this previous slide. So the the large chunk on the left, the 13.255 that's sort of shown in tan, that is what would need to be um, ARP rules um, for spending. Um, kind of moving in the clockwise direction, the 3.238 are the ARP projects. The tiny sliver there in tan is your uh, great grant set aside. The 3.8 million is your 2021 uh, supplanted funds. The 3 million under that is your 21-22 supplanted. And then the 10 million um, finishing up the bottom half of the pie chart is your revenue replacement standard um, allocation. Okay, so the eligible expenses for ARP funds, we have been designated um, different funding categories that would be allowable. So the first is anything that would support your public health expenditures by funding any sort of COVID mitigation efforts. Your second is the ability to address any negative economic impacts caused by COVID. Third, replace lost public sector revenue. This is that $10 million uh, standard allocation that we've already submitted for. Fourth, provide premium pay for essential workers. Five, invest in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. And then there's just an, a note at the bottom in terms of what is ineligible, and that would be anything like debt service, um, pensions, lawsuits, uh, settlements, anything like that. You would not be allowed to use funds. So this comes from the Department of Treasury trying to help narrow how these funds can be used. I need the broadband infrastructure. Yes. Is that the same broadband infrastructure that um, Doc, uh, the, the Governor Cooper was here talking about? The three million dollars, wasn't it? And that's something we're getting here. Is that the same we, thing? we were awarded a great grant. Right. Um, that's a separate pot of money. So you, the county could choose to use their ARP funds to further expand broadband infrastructure. There is a set aside that goes with that great grant. 
that is an eligible expense, okay. that 381000 But if you chose to do further broadband infrastructure investment, that would be an allowable expense with is ARP this, funds. Is this the one you were talking about? The great grant? Okay. Yes, it was. Yes. Okay. Good question. All right. Wait, uh, Go we, ahead. Would you, uh, or do you know the uh, number? I think Bruce was there with us. Uh, how many households would be impacted from the great grant expansion? That we received was it so it was 793 homes and businesses that would be affected um we're supposed to put out an updated number on that that was when i did the presentation in april yeah. but that's the official number in the official areas the federal government said so it also serves a lot more people because you've got that whole backbone so they to reach those specific areas, but along those areas, they're going to root out and, and, and get more folks. So right. they have to say officially that number, but it's going to be a lot more than that. But this is for people to have the access to it. This is not giving them free service in their home. Correct. Okay. Correct. This is just the infrastructure they would okay. still need to sign on for service and pay a monthly amount. Okay. Now there is a separate component to that in the uh, providers. Yes. are required to provide low-cost service to low-income households. That's right. Cool. right. Yep. Okay, so our next slide is um, some guiding principles that we've come up with. And I seem to have stalled out there. Bruce, if you could. Oh, again. Thank you. These are some guiding principles for using the ARP funds for the remaining balance. So this is coming from your u.s treasury as well as the school of government and the guidance has continued to change so it's very appropriate <laughs> that you have not committed all of your funds yet because we're still learning and getting further restrictions on how the funds can be used so the first is focusing on projects that have significant community impacts they have to be able to be large-scale community impact projects we are suggesting um, that we limit the uses to one-time non-recurring expenditures for obvious reasons is there's a limited pot of money we don't want to incur future costs associated with those and then three um, we are being told to avoid sub-granting of your ARP funds so there's a high probability we're hearing that the US Treasury will claw back their money if the county has not spent the funds on their own project so if you were to start funding nonprofits uh, and sub-granting these funds, it is highly likely that the funds would be clawed back by the U.S. <laughs> Treasury and then we would not be able to complete the project. So that is some direction uh, that we recently got and that's through the School of Government to not do any sub-granting with a high warning that it would need to come back to the U.S. Treasury. Is that new guidance? It's been over the last few months um, but that's about as clear as we've seen it um, so that the U.S. Treasury does not want any subgranting of funds. So if we subgranted funds to, an, uh, to a nonprofit, yes, completed a project, they came back to us. We'd have to take the funds out of county funds and re yes. reimburse us. Okay. Right. So that's sort of a dangerous territory. We did explore. I know at one time funding nonprofits. The board had heard some requests from nonprofits. We also followed up with the United Way to ask if they would be willing to help administer the nonprofits, and they came back and said they would not uh, be able to help administer the ARP funds for nonprofits. And then with this guidance, we Pretty felt much. like we probably did not want to head down mm -hmm. that road um, with the ARP funds at this point. Well, it's intended, uh, I think, to, to benefit our citizens anyway, and not that the nonprofits don't benefit our citizens, but this, I think, a benefit to our citizens should be to save them tax dollars. So. Yes. Yes. So I'm not going to go through um, this lengthy list, but this gives you some idea of what we are being required to do if we're going to spend ARP funds. We have to implement this uniform guidance and put in place all of these policies that were listed here uh, for any of the projects that we're doing. So there's quite a bit of uh, strings attached to this funding. It takes a lot of policy uh, development. These will be coming back 
uh, in front of the board for adoption. We have to have these on the record as adopted before we can use the ARP funds for these projects. And so you can see in the, the bottom half, the projects that we are talking about will require uh, the policies to come back and, and be adopted. So this is the same slide that you have already seen, just sort of recapturing um, what has been spent to date, what is left. We have about 16.4 million um, that are for the eligible ARP projects. So we have in this pot unidentified about 13.2 million that is left subject to the ARP funds. And these are some considerations that we think um, make sense. This is not a necessarily uh, a decision that the board needs to make at this time, but to best meet the recommended selection criteria and to consider um, limiting your ARP funds to capital projects, we would uh, suggest considering uh, an appropriation to the diversion center. Uh, $12 million of ARP funds would be eligible for the diversion center, so not quite the full cost of it. Um, we would also consider an EMS substation, which is one of the projects that you had looked at. Uh, only $1 million of ARP funds would be allowable for this particular project. Is that the $15 million that Senator Gailey and no, that is a different project. Okay. That's an emergency services okay. center that would consolidate um, in one place. So that's a different project altogether. This would be an EMS substation towards the northern Mebane uh, area gotcha. to help provide a better response for our ambulances. And then the last one, uh, the courthouse renovation project is not eligible for ARP funding but we would suggest because we have such a gap between um, available funding and needs that you could look at using some of the supplanted funding that is now clean and clear. You could uh, target some of that or direct some of that mm -hmm. to the courthouse project to help close that gap. So really trying to focus on large capital projects, not too many projects uh, because the amount of paperwork and um, oversight that's required on each of these, we feel like three is an, a manageable amount um, and gives you a, a good bang for your buck in terms of implementing community impact projects. So that is where we're at at this point. Any of us are happy to answer questions that you might have. Just wanted to kind of put a roadmap out there with some suggestions about what we're thinking as the um, clarifications and the direction has become a little a little stronger for us. What questions um, can we answer? Where are you going to get that $100 million for that courthouse from? At this point, we're having conversations about bringing that project um, down, downsizing it, I guess, downsizing the needs list. So we understand that $100,000 is not, uh, $100 million is not um, a project that Alamance County could afford at this time. Because if, if, would that be a bond if we had to do that? Yes. Which would be, ta be tagged to a tax increase? Yep. Oh. Yeah. We <laughs> tax <laughs> increase. We have not considered that yet, other than to just hope to bring it down, sort of down, right size it to an appropriate <laughs> budget. <laughs> Good word. <laughs> this yes. is what we're <laughs> intending. <laughs> um, I'm just going to go over all the diversion center. Um, yeah. Is that to pay for the whole building? Is the building, I want to know all, because I don't, I hear about it in a meeting, so I want to yeah. know, is that being built now? Uh, we've originally had Chad Porterfield, amazing, super nice guy. Then we stopped, we put an RFP out. Then we, what, where are we? Yes. Because every other week I'm hearing a different story. Because I can't support, but I don't know what's happening. Because yes. if anybody's for diversion, I do that for a living. And, oh, yeah. and I get people all over the state because we don't have the facilities here uh, yes. to house these folks once they're diverted. Yes. Because okay. outpatient is a great thought and it works for some. Residential doesn't work for some. They sure. run. This is a, we got to get your head around this person. Yes. It's, it's, a, it's a devil that's got a hold of this person. Yes. So and this is killing us. It's killing us. 
Now they're making fentanyl look like Pez and sweet tarts to go after kids. It's, it's everywhere, and we cannot act like it's not here because our law enforcement could work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and still be chasing it. And our county's got to really understand what is happening to us and I, sometimes I feel like I'm just I'm talking to a wall and um, so what about the diversion center yes yeah, so the diversion center is a very important project for us the next agenda item is all about the diversion center okay. we want to talk through an agreement with via who would be the provider of that go through the funding sources that we would need the board to commit to making that a viable center and so we will sort of flush that one out a little bit more. Uh, right now, we're thinking that $12 million of ARP funds could be applied to make that project come to fruition. But we'll talk about the operating costs and what it will take for that. Um, this set aside, you know, you have until 2026 to spend your ARP funds. So we would set this aside for the diversion center um, for that larger piece. But we'll flush out the operating. Uh, expenses how we'll pay for that what kind of what the contract would entail for the scope of services with via and an estimated timeline for that project getting off the ground at the next agenda item and this is only discussion this morning just written. right you don't have to commit to funding this but we wanted to get some ideas in front of you all so we could make sure that we're heading in the right direction I would just like to say that this discussion cannot go on as long as stepping up initiative has gone on because Alamance County citizens are dying and they're, you can't, we just cannot keep, we're gonna work on this the next meeting. We, we just, we are so quick to, why are we not being aggressively going after this? I mean, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, unless you work in it, you don't get it. I don't get law, I don't get banking, I don't get stocks, but y'all's people ain't dying because of it. These are families that are just disintegrating because of this. It is getting in our schools, which leads to violence. It's all in the same ugly bucket. I was at the Governor's Crime Commission last week, and the SBI beta team did an amazing presentation. I went straight to Dane Butler. They're going to bring them here about what it takes to become a school shooter and how you see what these kids are doing as young in middle school. Because if you don't, like Craig's upstream throwing out trash, and I'm downstream trying to catch it, you've got to go in prevention mindset because it is everywhere. Alamance County hadn't been on, this, on the big news yet, but that don't mean we can't be. Um, we cannot just keep going to the next meeting. We're getting events really quickly, so we need to get this really quickly because this has been going on for years, years, I tell you. Jack meeting, we go, we talk about it, the leaders of the community, they are foaming at the mouth to get this done, and so am I. And, and we are sitting here and I know just because we run the county, quote unquote, and have the keys to the checkbook, we need to put ourselves in these positions and see the importance of this because it's, it's killing this country. 107,000 deaths now from January on overdoses, and they're getting younger. That's where the majority of all youth deaths are because they're buying this crap online, and it's not what it says it is. They shouldn't be buying it to start with. I mean, we all, we all should have, would have, could have. But we've got to get serious in this. I don't want somebody in our family to take this and die for us to really care about it. Because well, we've had a prominent family that I know that lost their son a couple of weeks ago and, and they hurt just as bad as the nobody. Because it's somebody's kid, it's somebody's dad, it's somebody's mom. And we are orphaning children, they are in foster care. I've got so many clients that are in the custody of their grandparents. And I mean, this, and sometimes grandparents aren't the ones that need to be raising them because of the job they did with the attic. I mean, I'm just going to get ugly here. I don't really care. We have got to get off our hind ends and get this done. This is ridiculous. <sighs> well, there's a project underway. It's underway. Um, the buildings are being built. The decision is to who's going to pay for it. And well, that's, you, yep, that seems so like your art money is the answer to everything. The next item is an operating agreement right. for how we're going to actually operate. What services, who's going to pay for them, and when, since I've been here, it's been drafted between legal yeah. 
And so I know it doesn't happen overnight. We're bringing that before the board today to get that project rolling. Uh, we've got to be totally transparent with the public too because this is expensive. It's a money pit because it's destructive behavior and it doesn't get fixed with one treatment right. or one three month stint. It's life going on. It's mm. always there, always chasing, always has to have support. So. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I've got a couple questions. If I, if sure. uh, the EMS substation, we've talked about that for a while. Is that included in the county capital plan already? It is. So the only piece that is eligible for ARP funds is a million dollars. Okay. The other uh, balance of that is one of your CIP projects. And, okay. So that's. Is the $3.2 million a new number, or is that what we've planned for over the past couple of years? It's the same number we've been planning. Thanks. Okay, and, and is, that's the the substation we were looking at with some land in Mebane? Yes. Okay, what, what, do you, what do we need to implement that? Just the decision to fund it, or is it already, I thought it was already funded in the capital plan, or has the potential to be funded in the capital plan, we just have to allocate the resources. It has the potential to be funded in the capital plan as is. It's also our eligible, which right. might free so you up can offset. the capital plan. Right. right. Do we have, I mean, do we have land? Do we have, well, I guess, what's the status of that effort? Sherry, do you want to? Yeah. Um, so we are, we are working right now with City of Nevin to look at the piece of land that we're, I mean, to have them help us look at the piece of land that we've identified to make sure that it would be eligible for us to put a substation there. In fact, Ray Vipperman was on a call this morning with City of Mebane, so we are we're making some progress on that. Would that require a new truck and a new crew, or multiple new trucks and crews? So I, I think we talked about this a little bit during budget. Um, the thought process is that as we build, we would be expanding our services as well. So at some point, we would come back and ask for a new truck and a, a new crew for that. For that, right now they can move some people around, but um, they're just getting busier, and Nevin's getting busier. Right. So they are going to ask that we have a new new truck and a new crew. It'll probably be two years before that's built, though. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then real quick, the courthouse renovation. What, in the current plan, what, what amount, what amount are we, what amount do we plan for, for the total cost of what was then the administrative building? Was it 10 point, some, 10 or 14 million? The JBL in portion, it was somewhere in that range, yes sir. Okay. Um, and that was supportable based on current revenues. Correct. Um, so, do we? Do you, we don't know the exact figure. I'm putting you on the spot, but because um, ten to fourteen is a pretty big gap. <laughs> My recollection was around thirteen, but it's going to take a minute to look that up. Okay. And was was some of that was some of that going to be paid with cash? In addition to debt service, it was intended to be a debt, you know, debt-funded project. Fully debt. Yes, sir. Okay. So there's there's about 14 in the plan already to cover what was original, what was going to be a, a the J.B. Allen renovation. And was there a plan on when we started that? The timing. Do you know? Twenty-five. Okay, that's what I have. Okay. That's what I'm just wondering what the gap is now. Eighty five million? Well <laughs> <laughs> assuming the thirteen. Yeah, 80, 80, 80. <laughs> what is ninety eight minus? Right if I could right just bill. figure out ninety eight minus yeah, fourteen. What is that number? Uh, it's being, not uh, pretty. <laughs> I'm just being funny. We can move on. I just, I just wanted to know what that gap was. Um, the EMS substation. Mm -hmm. um, I've had several EMS folks that are still current and have retired 
to um, ask, had we ever thought about considering Mevin to adding on to their existing building where they have their fire to have their EMS located on site there as well? Sherry is nodding. Do you want to say something about that? Sure. We, we have looked at that opportunity and we did not feel that there was enough land okay. to offer us the opportunity to okay. build. I know Chicago Fire does that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We can move on. Um, well, have you, you got the answer to that question? Thirteen million six hundred and sixty-two thousand. Repeat that, please. Thirteen what? Thirteen million six hundred and sixty-two thousand. No sense. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's move on to items. Steve, I just have one question. Sure. And it's just Sorry. because I, I'm just trying to get it straight in my head. I want to revert back to the $10 million that we have. Um, mm -hmm. The revenue replacement? Yeah. Where is that? Where is it? Yeah, is it still in the, <laughs> is it still in the ARP funds? Is it, or is it yes. in our, it's, it's not in our fund balance because you, you made no. a comment before that we have to actually file some paperwork to, to move this money over. That's right. At the some plan point. would be to submit eligible expenditures in this fiscal year in order to move that money um, to fully expend the ARP funds and then ask the board to reserve the $10 million in general fund. Could we, um, could we carry it forward if we didn't do anything for this year? Could we carry it? Because I, I'm just, yeah. actually, I have one other question. I, you mentioned a date, uh, 2026 mm -hmm. is when this ARP funds have to be expended. Senior, right? I thought it was the 2024. Yeah. Mm -hmm. December of 24 is the deadline to expend. Okay. If you have encumbered for a major project, you have two more years after that. So we could decide up until the 24th, but have the funds spent by the 26th. That's I what I that's thought. Right. Okay. Just just wanted to ask that, that, that crazy. I know it was a crazy question because I, I know if it was 10 million in my fund balance, I would have seen it already. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you would. We'll check it out. <laughs> Has the 3.5 and the 3.0 that that are supplemental funds in fund balance? The 3.5 is in fund balance. The 3.0, when the books are closed this fiscal year, that 3 million, and we're hoping it's going to be higher than that. But at least 3 million has been identified so far um, would roll into fund balance. You would see that in the next audited financial statements. Higher because you can supplant more funds. Correct. I see. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned clause. The clawback. Are they going to have any more ideas of clawing back money uh, like next month? Because we got a lot of big positions I hope we're not. going to be paying federally all of a sudden. I hope I don't not. Know if they needed to borrow from us. They're saying this is their final uniform guidance. Final heard, heard federal government. Before. I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> You're just supposed to decide. I've got a deal on a one. bridge in Brooklyn. <laughs> right, Steve. It's got it. <clears throat> Cost you 20 bucks to go across it. Yeah. Okay, any other comments or questions? Let's move on to item number seven then on um, Ms. Hook. Not sure how this got moved. Okay, so um, this morning I am here to give you information um, to consider an MOA with Via Health. Um, this would be to provide funding for the lease and furnishings for a new diversion mental health services building. Currently, mental health services are provided from a building on Ann Elizabeth Drive. The new building would give us uh, opportunity for expansion of current services the ability to separate youth mental health needs from adult mental health services and provide enhanced services through the addition of a facility-based crisis center. The facility-based crisis center would be a 16-bed um, facility that would be for mental health stabilization and substance abuse detox. The facility that VIA is considering at this time is at the intersection of Long Pine and Kirkpatrick Road. It's adjacent to Cone's ARMC campus. 
The initial lease amount um, is $1,396,000, and it's anticipated that the building would be up and operational around November of 23. There are several funding sources for the project. The county holds um, a contribution from Cardinal Innovations. Um, they gave us $1.2 million a few years ago to help with the um, building of a diversion center. There are about $250,000 in banked MOE funds, $500,000 in state funding for mental health <coughs> efforts, and um, there are opioid settlement funds available as well. Our first year opioid settlement funding is $1.09 million. And then annually after that it's... So it is annually. There are, there continue to be, um, there continue to be um, contributions annually and they are going to range from half a million dollars to $391,000. Over the course of 18 years, the settlement is $8.8 .8 million. So um, a copy of the MOA is in your, uh, in your agenda packet. Uh, Kara Townsend Donner from Via Health is here. Also Donald Roos from Via Health is joining through Zoom and we are ready to answer questions from the board and I will say before we get into any other questions there is uh, the model for this diversion center um, we did talk with a subgroup from the JAC committee and the things that we have talked about in this diversion center would be emergency walk-in <coughs> clinic, um, outpatient clinic, behavioral health urgent care, facility-based crisis, and an on-site pharmacy. Okay. And we are here to answer questions. We also had a representative from RHA here earlier, but she had to leave before we got to this presentation. The Cardinal Innovation 1.2, mm -hmm. it's because they're gone. Mm -hmm. What's going? Is that going to be via? <coughs> so okay. that money is already with the county. So but I mean, is that going to be a yearly it thing? Is, it okay. is going to be. Donald's via. shaking his head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Donald. Now that's current funds. That's not. That doesn't continue going. That does forward. not continue. Right. That's, that's a one point two million dollar contribution one time. Mm -hmm. Now the lease amount would be in lieu of us purchasing the facility, right? It would be. So. The funding is there to provide for this facility without us having to use $12 million to buy it. Am I correct? Correct. So what you'll have is that there there is funding here to cover the lease for um, several years without any additional contributions from the county. How far out would that run? About eight? So, um, yeah, around... Uh, seven to eight years without any additional contributions. <coughs> the, the opioid settlement money, that just blows my mind. You get money from people who, it just, I encourage you all to somehow watch the movie Dope Sick. It really tells you how all these painkillers, really Oxycontin and all that, just just took us, really. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious about that kind of money because I'm going to invite my commissioners. I'm going to Harnett County on 928 with a few people to see their veterans court and I'm going to Surrey County which has an opioid recovery court treatment which is a star. They're just awesome. On 913 I will email you and, um, and I want to know if this is part of diversion because it sure is in their counties because it's like an extension of taking that person having them for a year um, these are low these are not violent violent people they're just violent to themselves when it comes to addiction and they have a case manager they're constantly checked on I mean it's like you just adopt a kid because that's basically what it takes and um, and if you get through that year that's expunged so to speak and you're, you're you just keep going um, and I'm just curious because I'd asked Deborah about that, and I'm gonna ask you about that too, Rick, because that's a heated question. If that opioid money could help fund that recovery court, um, because it's it's that important. Whenever um, Mr. Haygood was here, we were looking at ABC liquor sales mm -hmm. to help with drug addiction. I, I, I don't. I'm telling you. Um, anyway, and there were funds for that that could work for that. But I just think 
you know, there are other counties doing this, and we've got to do the whole package. And I'm, I'm going to say this again with the diversion that's going on with Krista Knight and Steve Ginter. You need another set of these people because there's not enough time in the day for them to be as busy as they are. And once you open this door, you better get ready. It's kind of like the border, you know, with all your drugs that's come in. And we're seeing how that's killing Americans and anybody else. Boy, I'm on a broom today. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, but I'm just curious about this, this court, this drug court, because this Veterans Court and this Recovery Court, their stars in their counties, they're based on the same principle. It's, it's mentorship, it's, mm -hmm. it's accountability, it's really there for somebody that can't be there for themselves for a while. Because um, when you look up their YouTube video about the recovery court and the judge in Cumberland County and Buncombe County and Forsyth County and Surrey County, they're doing great work for men who have come back from service that have had catastrophic injuries and gotten addicted, PTSD, all kind of stuff. We, we are not going to forget our soldiers. We're not because they sure don't forget us when it's time for us to ship somebody somewhere. So um, Did Donald you say Harris, Veterans Court. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Veterans, veterans court. court is the same thing as drug recovery, but it's only for veterans. But you can run them both <clears throat> beside each other. You'll see if you get to. I wish you'd go with me. You said that's uh, Surrey County on the 13th? Surrey County's opioid court, but Harnett County is um, veteran court right close to. Fort on Park. the 13th? 13th. I will email you in big bold letters. So, Donald. Yes, I heard part of that, uh, Commissioner Thompson, so I appreciate that. So the drug court piece is, is a complete um, part of the continuum, right? The drug court is how we divert people after they get involved with the, you know, the court system. I think this diversion center we're talking about is really trying to get further upstream to where we can really try to start catching people before they get involved with the court system as you know it's really expensive once an individual gets involved with the court system and that's a, a longer term process and so the goal is to try to invest in a lot of this prevention work that you spoke really passionate about earlier that we need to catch these families we need to catch these children we need to catch individuals that need the help now right. and they're not getting the help and that's leading to all of this jail involvement and then court involvement and so you need to have all the pieces of the continuum but without this first uh safety net is what i call it to start catching people they're all going to land in court and it's just going to constantly overwhelm <laughs> your court system and your specialty court system, if you don't have something ahead of that that's going to catch individuals, support individuals to get on that path to recovery before they get in the court system. If the only way they can get in that recovery thing is to get in the court, you'll have people getting into trouble just so they can get the help they need, which is not what we want in Alamance Camp. Prevention is a lot cheaper than intervention. Mm -hmm. That's with yeah. everything. Absolutely, but we definitely need the core pieces too, and I, and I agree that there's ways to um, pair this funding. I don't know if it's been talked too much in the county, but we are getting ready to roll out a new service in the county as well called Critical Time Intervention, which is a grant we just got uh, from the state to launch it to help initially wrap those individuals with extremely intensive services um, as they're coming out of the courts or coming out of ED. Um, within those processes. And so we just got um, a half a million dollar grant uh, from the state to lift this project and we're rolling that through now to really plug another piece of the continuum. The piece for us is, is you know, in order for us to build the services for this diversion, we need a building uh, to work from, which is why it's so important uh, for the county to look at a potential investment in a facility in the county that we can start building some of these services and pay for them through either state, federal, or Medicaid service dollars. I agree. Well, I guess my biggest concern would be strapping our citizens eight years out with an expenditure which we don't have plans for today. Mm -hmm. Definitely want to see us do something about this. But now if we take the $12 million that we're talking about out of ARC funds mm -hmm. to apply to a building, does that cover the cost of the building that we're looking at leasing for 1.39? I think that I'm not sure that the lease would be eligible under ARP. <coughs> a purchase. Or That's a what build. I'm saying. Yeah, if we use it a purchase to purchase or a building. It, that yeah. would eliminate that mm -hmm. lease dollar, which it would, would, yes. would provide the sources of funding to cover that. 
Would that stretch those funds out longer? How would that work? Ask me that again. I didn't follow. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I just thought of the question. Um, in lieu of in lieu of leasing, if we buy, mm -hmm. takes that 1.3 million off the table from a lease expense it perspective. It does. Yes. Does that do those funds stay in our fund balance so that we can use them to cover future expenses? They would. So what happens is if you were to purchase it, it frees up your future opioid settlement monies. Right. Um, you would still utilize your 1.2 from Cardinal. You'd still utilize your 500,000 right. from the state. So I think really what it frees up is um, your opioid settlement money for the future. It would be the main thing that it's going to free up. A couple of questions, Mr. Roos. Um, so as I understand it, the structure of this deal is that VIA leases the, the building that's being constructed and that the county is in essence reimburses VIA for that lease for 10 years, right? Correct. Is there a minimum, is there a minimum number of years that VIA mm -hmm. has to lease the building instead of buying it? There is a, it's a 10 year lease, but there is an option in the lease agreement that uh, we can either purchase or delegate the purchase of that building uh, within uh, 25 months at a $12 million purchase price or delegate a purchase earlier uh, for a slightly higher purchase price of roughly around 15 months. 25 months from when? From the date that the building is complete, so it would be November of 23, give or take a few months there. Okay. Um, what does the building look like, and how big is it? Uh, the building is 28,000 square foot, and it's basically the same building we brought to the commissioners, I think that was back last April. Now, I think then we, that I think we were considering a number of different options then. Is this like one building or is it two buildings or three buildings? Yes, this is a uh, one building is a two story building, uh, which is the main building for the diversion center. And then there's a slightly smaller building off to the side, which would be for child services. That was the agreed plan by the uh, crisis uh, subcommittee that the commissioners picked. If you get beyond the 25 months, uh, is there still an option to purchase or do you have to make that decision at the 25 month period or before? Uh, anytime after the 25 months, uh, there's the option to purchase. At 12 million? After uh, yes. 20, after 25 months. After, and then, so, who, who determines what services are provided in the building? Is that VIA's call or is it the county's call? Well, our goal would be to work with the county to talk about what services are in there, what need to pro be provided. There's a certain subset package of services we think that need to be part of the building in order to really have a one-stop shop for individuals to get their needs met, um, which can, considers that crisis diversion center, urgent care services, some of those outpatient services, anything above and beyond there. Um, you know, like would we prefer there be an in-house pharmacy there? Um, as well, we'd like to see some co-location for your, uh, uh, your ESS Medicaid eligibility workers there. We'd love to see some co-location for vocational rehab um, around getting individuals connected to their system for um, supported education, support and employment. Um, but again, those, those will be conversations we have with the county as well as any subcommittees like the JAC subcommittee uh, that the county uh, would like to use as their primary source for those conversations. There's been a, a talk about Medicaid expansion in the in the state, regardless of where they, how you feel about that. If that happens, does that change the services that VIA provides, or does it not? Uh, it doesn't change the services we provide. It just makes more individuals eligible for the Medicaid reimbursement. As you know, one of the largest challenges we have is a very small pot of money that has to serve all of the uninsured individuals. And so for a facility like this, you're talking to roughly around 80% of the individuals that are going to walk through the doors or be dropped off there by law enforcement are going to be uninsured, um, meaning they don't have a Medicaid source. And so if the state did decide to expand Medicaid to this particular population, then that would greatly um, improve the financial sustainability as well as the viability of those dollars that are going into the facility. 
as you know, our state dollars are completely controlled by the General Assembly. So, you know, we can afford these services, you know, for this year and next year, but if they came back and changed the budget and completely removed state dollars from uh, our services, we would lose the ability to fund these services uh, under the state budget. So having them under Medicaid um, ensures a lot more long-term sustainability. So if that happens, would the cost of the county in terms of its annual operation costs increase such that this plan would no longer work? Uh, no. The, if they expanded Medicaid, it wouldn't impact county costs at all. Okay. The, the, the key word there is if. Yeah. We just say everything so yes. iffy. Um, Donald, is there anybody that's going to be dropped off at that diversion center that don't even know what the word insurance means? Are they going to be declined? No. Okay. No. The, uh, and that's the, our commitment is that we're going to funnel as many of our state dollars as we can, which means we need to move some of the, the state dollars we already have in the system, like with an RHA, which is why they're part of this conversation. They are to get a pool of those dollars, and so those dollars need to be redirected into these centers, and so the services need to be redirected uh, into their centers. And so that's one way we're able to sort of pool those dollars together to make sure when somebody shows up, the first thing is that they deal with the crisis, they worry about getting paid later. Yeah. Very similar to, uh, you know, I hate to say this, the firehouse model, to where, you know, you don't check insurance before you go put out the fire. Um, just one question. If, you know, when you go to Aaron's Rent a Center and you want to rent a VCR, it costs you $25,000 by the time if you want to own it. Why would we lease this building for a couple of years and then buy it? Genius, help me. That's kind of <laughs> what I just said, ma'am. That's a very I good I know, question. but I want to know why. Why are we thinking that way? We were thinking that doing this model would allow it to operate quicker. Okay. <laughs> If we do it ourselves and build it, we're issuing an RFP, we're getting different proposals, and so that just adds further delay. And we don't where, own the land, so we don't have a Right, place to we're put still it. shopping for locations, but this seemed like the quickest way to get a facility up and running is to partner with VIA, let them go ahead, choose the builder, build the facility, and then we will help them with the, the rental rate. Okay. Well, isn't the 25 months going to bump us up into that time frame? Because I'm just doing the math here. 25 months from 23 gets you into 25. Yeah. Are we going to have to pull the trigger uh, before December 24th? I'm just saying it's like, you know, the 25 months start November 23rd only buys us not 25 months, 13 months. We'd have to pull the trigger on something inside 13 months. So I'm just wondering if... You have uh, to commit it, right? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, right. But I figure once you go that, once you get down that road so far, you can, the commitment's already been made. Just the time is not your friend any longer. Correct. Correct. All right. So I'm just thinking about this properly. Okay. Yep. I just encourage us to think outside the diversion center, which is the foundation, sure. with all the other things that have to go along with that to have success in this business, so to speak. And um, we, th this is a. Uh, this is a hard subject and it costs a lot of money, but some things are hard subjects and they cost a lot of money. It's our fellow man, that's what we gotta do. Nobody asks for all this to come in this country. Here, try me. You know, it's, we're beyond a stranger on a piece of candy, little kid. I mean, no, we're way past that. And um, because of the expense it costs us, it comes in our schools, it comes in our colleges. You know, I just, I mean, all I've seen this week on, on TV is parents burying their children great kids i mean just athletes the whole nine yards and they just took that wrong pill that wrong day and it cost them my daughter's a zookeeper they glove up with them playtex gloves and heavy things when they sedate elephants with fentanyl and you want to put that in your body it's unbelievable the power of this i, I had a girl the other day tell me she said i want drugs more than i want my children what does that say about this this is this is evil and if we don't man up and go after this with every angle we can, because it's just in a building, it's what's inside the room, it's like a church. What's this on the pew makes the church. And it's this way, and we've got to listen to the pros in this. I personally think the minute they walk in that jail, their treatment needs to start. Because if you think somebody's sitting in there for three weeks and four weeks, they are detoxed and they're over it. They are holding their breath till they get out. I see it all the time. I got several that are, are got warrants out for them where they've ran. It's just the nature of this beast. 
So uh, we got to look at every aspect of what it takes to battle this. We just can't think the diversion center is going to do it for all of us. We got to really listen to the professionals on this. This is what they do because it's not what we do. We do government. And we got to listen to them and be humble enough and have humility to listen to the pros in this. Or we're not going to change anything and we're going to die. It's killing us. It's the brand new terrorist. I'm telling you. Yes, Karen. I just want to say, in addition to the diversion center, we've talked about this. But yeah. We can help the county set up a substance use committee. Thank you. So I don't know if you need a vote on that, but it's a way to advise the commissioners, you know, from county leaders, from EMS to judges. To law enforcement, because um, you've got needed. some strong other things like this in other counties, yes. and we cannot be behind because yes. drugs so, kill us just like they do anywhere else. We're happy to have that conversation if the, the commissioners would like. That. I think we should have that conversation. Yeah, I'd like to say, put that on the agenda for our meeting on the 19th, is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had ABS to contact me about a substance abuse program for under 18. Since they raised the age up to 18, that's two more years of just devastation. And these are some hardcore criminals. They're young kids. Don't forget their kids. And we got to make sure that we've got that ready for them because they'll be housed at Ray Street Academy. Great school, great principal. He gets this. He knows why people do what they do. And I've contacted Valia about helping us start that. We got to go to the pros on this. It's not what we do, it's what they do. And we got to listen. So I just want to add, building on what Heidi said, this is one option for the commissioners to um, consider, and this is an option that would get you a newer diversion center with enhanced services by next fall. The other option would be that you just start from scratch, identify land, and build a building yourselves. So you're talking about um, that's probably a three-year process there. Um, but I just want to point that out. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the uh, request. I'll second it. Big. Big second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ms. Rollins. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. So last August, you approved a budget to allow us to spend some of our ARP funds to hire a grant administrator. We advertised the position. It took us until February to um, find the uh, candidate that was appropriate. And uh, that candidate started working for us in mid-April. And uh, when we, uh, uh, we have heard that uh, you'd like to get a regular update, this is the first opportunity that we've had to do a, maybe a quarterly update to let you know what's going on with that position and would welcome feedback on what you'd like to hear about. Um, I'll tell you that when we advertise the position, we advertise the array of things that a grant administrator could do. Uh, community engagement, uh, organizing um, uh, opportunities for our departments, organizing opportunities for outside agencies, nonprofits, uh, looking for grants, applying for grants, um, administering them once they are awarded, and uh, we, we were looking for a candidate that um, would be able to help Alamance County take advantage of fun other funding sources. So uh, we ended up with a candidate who has uh, FEMA experience. His experience uh, has been in the government world, and um, he came to work for us, as I said, in April, in the middle of budget season. So we asked him to be supportive of our ARP um, efforts at that time. So we needed to make sure that he understood the federal ARP grants because not only did Alamance County receive them, but so did the state and so did other agencies. So we needed to um, have him do some training to understand that funding source. We asked him to do some research memos and help us with ARP eligibility for us to be able to supplant local expenditures and save our ARP funds for big projects, we needed a little more help. Our department was a little understaffed um, for the past six months, so he has been uh, assisting with that, as well as documenting grant opportunities. So one of the early things that he did was to start identifying what are grant opportunities out there that would benefit citizens of Alamance County. Um, he's looking at, he has set up uh, timelines so he set up a calendar. There may be a grant that is very beneficial, but you can't apply for it until April. So he set up a calendar for when these grant opportunities um, are available 
and um, what uh, how it should be funneled so for example if there are grant opportunities related to um, emergency management training and they're available in April then it it makes sense for him to be working with our emergency management department um, there are other grants that we have found that are, are more um, related to what our municipalities are already doing so that would be an opportunity for him to reach out to them in order to have someone um, working on a, a grant funded project that would benefit our community so he's identifying these grants he's identifying uh, who our partner might be what department might uh, be a operating um, and, and be able to uh, fund programs that we are already doing in those departments using new funding sources um, but at this point um, he has not applied for any grants so right now our next piece is to determine the methodology for what we want to apply for because we don't want to uh, bring applications to the board for approval if it's going to uh, cost us more in staff time or um, not meet the strategic priorities that this board has so that's the next step that he would be working on and i would like to uh, introduce peter peter mihawk is our grant administrator he has been working with us for several months and uh, he and i are both interested in what kind of direction or what kind of questions you might have well i've uh, i've had some conversations with some of the municipalities as some of the rest of us might have as well and they're bringing in grant writers as well. So this, I would encourage us, I think, for us to try to coordinate the efforts among the various municipalities in the county to find opportunities to benefit us all as efficiently as possible. So. But could we also be competing with the cities for, hmm. for good question. Kind of funding? Well, I think that um, when we're looking at the state grants and the federal grants, they are routed specifically to uh, a function. So if it's a function that our municipalities normally do, like streets, uh, street repair, or um, their natural functions, right. we wouldn't be competing with them because we would be hoping that they would be successful in getting those grants and, and achieving them. Um, if it's not state or federal funding that we're looking at, then there is a possibility. So for example, broadband or something else where um, both the city and a municipality has the opportunity to to participate there could be some competition there okay Pam uh -uh. I think I put on my broom <laughs> enough so I just need to tell her something before she oh, yeah. sits down I just want to make sure everyone got their questions in because this is going to be a while go ahead um, just relax. I'm completely surprised that we have this person designated as ARP funding because it was never my intentions to have anyone for ARP funding and I'll tell you why. Mimi Clemens was our point person for ARP. So I, I'm just a little bit surprised that this position was uh, designated as ARP funding because that was not my intentions for a grant writer. I wanted a grant writer for the Al for Alamance County, and I'll tell you where the idea came from. It didn't come from me because I don't think like this. Uh, it came from my liaison with ABSS. I was in a meeting one night, and I heard one of their grant funders come up and say some things about what they had accomplished. After the meeting, I went up to them and I asked them, "How can you? How can I get you to help the county do what you guys are doing?" So in my mind. And my mindset it was never about ARP funds. ARP funds never entered my, my mind because we have Mimi Clemens. And uh, that's why I asked for an update because uh, if I, I do think we should take the designation away, ARP should be taken out of that description. We need to have someone who works for the county like they work for the school system. And they, you know, and another another night, the reason I even asked to have the grant writer to come in to uh, give us our uh, uh, his work product, what he's accomplished since he's been on the job, was because that particular night we made a vote for the sheriff. The sheriff had a grant that was uh, given to him, and I thought, okay, great, the, the sheriff's getting a grant. That's awesome. 
that's when I wanted to ask about what our grant writer is taking care of and what we're doing. So my, my, only, my only thing I would suggest is let's take the designation ARP out. We don't, we don't need that. Uh, I don't need someone to tell me how to spend ARP funds. Yeah. I, have, I have my number already that I have to do. Uh, so I don't need anyone to tell me or direct me on what needs to be done. What I would like to do is direct the grant writer to go out there and compete against uh, the school system, compete against the sheriff, if that's what it all entails. Uh, let's go out there and compete against for these grants to see what we can we can pull in over the next I don't know next six months. And you know and and just to let the grant writer know, it's very nice to meet you by the way. Um, that you know I'm pretty much a stickler of uh, presenting to my employer uh, what I'm accomplishing out there. If I'm accomplishing zero. Well, I need to know that if you're accomplishing a great deal uh, I'd like to know that as well uh, so you know going forward uh, just prepare yourself like maybe like we do this for everyone uh, it's not like we're picking you out or treating you any special but we would like to hear uh, like we're going to be asking for the school system to come in and talk to us about what they've accomplished in the projects that we funded going forward so that's what we like to do is like every two or three months just come in just give us an update on what you're accomplishing Maybe you haven't accomplished anything, but you're working on some things and you're seeing some things that in, the, in the marketplace, so to speak, that we don't see. And so we'd like to have that sort of, you know, reciprocation just every two or three months come in and give us an update on what's going on, what you see, what you think we could do in the next two or three months, just to give us an idea of like what to, uh, what to expect going forward. And that's, that's basically all I wanted to say today was just to make sure that we take that designation from ARP funds out of the job description and let's concentrate on uh, some some grants that, like, uh, I know that the Parks and Recreation, for example, had some uh, really good grants coming forward. So let's just try to work something like that, uh, because there's a lot of money flowing around around us, and all we're really asking you to do is just pluck a few out for us. And uh, I wish you all the luck in the world. I can under, I can only imagine how difficult that position is, and uh, some of the things that you have to know. <laughs> to uh, make sure that that comes back to you in fruition. So just thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even think you're sitting down that quick. Um, I just want to, today's your last meeting, right? This mm -hmm. meeting. Okay. Um, you're phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And one of the smartest people I know that is totally obsessed with post-it notes. Your whole <laughs> desk <laughs> it looks like a Monopoly game board, but if it works, I don't care. Neat, even dusted. But I just want to thank you because um, being on the school board for eight years is a whole different ball game than coming here, and it's it's a you have to learn hitting the thing so to speak, hitting with your feet running, and everybody's always been so gracious to me. To like, no, Pam, we just don't have a magic wand because I would help everybody, and um, and I just want to thank you for your leadership and how you are on it no matter what, and you tell Algie Gatewood. <laughs> I'm over him. I'm over him. So I want to give him doorknobs if he comes in here asking. Me. But uh, but I, you're going to be a blessing to them, and I and I know with you there they're going to be even greater than what they already are. So um, you have tremendously big shoes to fill, and you are a blessing to this county, no matter where you are. And it's been a real honor to even come in the building with you here. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all of you for the kind words. I've, I've truly enjoyed working here. It's a great place. Well, I have to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to add a ditto to what she just said, and I have already chewed on Dr. Gatewood a little bit. Where are you going? Oh, yeah. So, um, no and doorknobs. We'll probably, and we'll it. probably chew on him a little bit more. So, uh, But you're, you're not going far. You're still with the county. You're just in another another, another bucket. So. It's possible I'll be back to one of these meetings with Dr. That's right. <laughs> oh, then, we, then we can yell at him in front of you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's I'm real into kidding. purple. I have uh, noticed that. Kidding. You know, he's just a slob when he comes in here. So him and well, he's she's already taking it on. She's got, purple purple on. Purple she's on. got her purple, she's on. Her purple on today. So. I know. I know. Algie wears purple everywhere I see him, just about. So. Hmm. But, Andrew, thank you so much for everything. We do appreciate it. Okay. Um, county manager's report. Yes, commissioners, in your packet is your um, fiscal year update. So this is from July of 22 uh, to today. And you can find that in your packet. If there are questions, we'd be happy to answer those. And I also wanted to thank Andrea 
um, for her uh, time in the position. We will greatly miss her, and she has left difficult shoes for us to fill. So thank you, Andrea. Okay, any other comments? This is this when we say something? <laughs> I just want to say two things. Um, um, last, we have discovered in the Governor's Crime Commission, I'm on the CVS, which is the Crime Victim Services Committee that grants, scores the grants, that family justice centers, no new ones. That's just what it's going to be. Thank the Lord we were number one. Mm -hmm. But we always need to make sure we support this because the work they do, you don't know till you work there or you walk in the door. We have a real ugly part of society and they're staff sees it all the time that wears you out self-care is huge and uh, we just need to always make sure that we take care of that aspect of our community and also I want to make a comment about DSS at the um, last um, meeting I was at I'm so lucky to be on their board every meeting when I first got on there when I first got elected it was like 60 plus positions short now we're under 40 and we think we're hot stuff oh, but that means there are positions that other people are having to pile on to do at the same time. And what struck me really wild last week, week for last, Miss Cole, I believe it was, was talking about CPS, and we have room for 20 maybe, correct me if I'm wrong. We have four, and we interviewed three, and we got two, so we have six. And I just hope you all understand, the minute children go back into school, they're going to sing like canaries. They're going to talk about the abuse they've had this summer. They've been home with their abuser all summer, kind of like COVID. Our stats tripled in one year, and that's just what's reported. That doesn't mean what's real. So we got to get real about DSS when it comes to paying our employees because, you know, they're like basic training, and they go on the MOS school. And we can't do that because we got issues here. Um, it was amazing talking about adult protective services, big time fraud. Oh, lady, you got a hole in your roof. Let me fix it for you. And there's no hole, but that that generation is so trusting. The best tithers in the church, and um, and just all kind of different aspects. I honestly don't believe the county, myself included, know the hugeness of what DSS does. They are phenomenal what they do. Fraud, food stamps, everything. They keep the county going. And uh, we got to get really serious about making these jobs attractive, just like our supplement for our teachers. That's marketing. We want the best there is because we don't want to train them to become the best somewhere else. So that's it. I encourage all my commissioners to go with me to a DSS meeting and watch Bob just drool <laughs> because he's always feels so defeated when he interviews people and it doesn't turn out because. You know, the numbers are not so high. It ain't like you're picking between 100 people. It's really skinny. And uh, bad stuff still happens, and it's getting worse. And you're seeing it jump on children. Uh, it always has been. And um, we've had some deaths of children with fentanyl. So trust me, it is out there. And we need to make sure we are ready to go to war with it and have the soldiers and the platoons and the warriors, or whatever you want to call it, to be able to hit the road and go. Um, because I know whenever I had to call them about a rest home that was so undermanned and they were there on a Sunday, picked it up and went themselves. They are never off, they're always on. So we need to think about that. Done. Thank you. I've got a new director, Kansas. She's so cute. Bill, I'm good today. Okay, a county attorney report. Okay. Um, so pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A3, I would ask the board to move into closed session to consult with an attorney employed or retained by the public body in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege between the attorney and the public body. The attorney will advise the board on ongoing legal matters, including notably NAACP et al. v. Alamance County et al. I don't anticipate any action after the closed session. I have a motion. Motion to go in closed session. Second. All members member say aye. Aye. We are in closed session. No. Motion to uh, end closed session. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Now we're out of closed session. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So and there were no decisions made in the closed session. So. We're down to three. Things so, are looking so kind of bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I get motion. Can motion and a second to Second, I will, Excellent. huh? Thank we you. are adjourned. Thank you. Now we can deal it. 
you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on Local Gov TV. Please go to www.localgovtvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on Local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.